Hi, my name is Jim Warner. I'm the program director at the Ohio State University Western Medical Center, and today we're going to cook chicken three ways. Joining me today at the John Maloney Health and Wellness Center is uh, Mary Sheehan. She's a registered dietitian with the Columbus Public Health Department, and today we're going to uh, focus on one-stop chicken chop, which is we're taking one chicken and we're going to make three recipes out of this uh, chicken. What we started with was a, about a seven pound chicken and with the chicken we uh, put it into a, a slow roaster, added about a quart of uh, salt free or unsalted chicken broth, some carrots, some celery, some onions, and we let this roast for about six hours. After we uh, roasted it, we let it come to room temperature, we put it into a refrigerator and let it chill overnight. The next morning we came out and then we skimmed the fat off the top of this and we threw it in the trash. So uh, that was the first st uh, step that we did with the chicken and that's really the most difficult uh, piece that we had to do uh, when we made, uh, uh, started the program. Uh, the first ingredient, or the first recipe that we're gonna start today, we have a one pot chicken minestrone and we're using the chicken broth that we use with the uh, slow roasted chicken and we're going to, uh, we, that's why the reason we call that the fortified stock because we have the chicken, we added the chicken stock to it, and then we have the vegetables in there as well. But for the uh, chicken minestrone soup that we're going to make, we have uh, the chicken stock, we have some uh, whole wheat penne pasta, we're using a frozen mixed vegetable, which is all ready to go. We have uh, two cups of chicken, we have uh, a cup of fresh spinach. Sous chef Mary is going to go ahead and julienne cut the spinach for us. And so julienne is thin, right? Julienne cut is a thin cut. So, All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to this section over here. I've already got a quart measured off in the pot. So I'm going to go ahead and add the chicken to the pot. And again, this is at a pretty rapid boil. We're going to add that to the pot and that's uh, ready to go. And then we're going to take our cup of penne pasta and this takes about 12 minutes to cook and we're using the whole wheat penne pasta which uh, if you cook it too long it'll tend to uh, fall apart on you so we want to cook this right around 11 or 12 minutes and with what Mary's doing over here with the spinach we're going to add the spinach at the very end because the spinach is very very fine and it doesn't take a long time for it to cook but it really makes the soup look colorful and adds a, a lot of flavor and some uh, vitamin content to that as well. Yeah. Mary's doing a great job with the julienne cuts. And with the spinach, we find with the fresh spinach, um, it does uh, reduce in volume quite a bit. You can use frozen spinach for this if you like. Uh, one of the things that we found is uh, with healthy eating, you know, one of the most important ways to prevent chronic diseases uh, like diabetes and uh, obesity is to cook fresh and cook at home. It's really not that difficult and the items that we have here are items that you probably already have in your home. And by using one chicken, we're able to stretch this and to make three nutritious meals that are extremely affordable and very convenient for you and your family. So we've got our chicken in there cooking. The next ingredient that we're going to add is our vegetables. So Mary's about finished here with the, uh, with the julienne. There you go. And I have to say she's doing a fine, fine job with the julienne. And we're going to save this and we're going to put this back into this container. And we're going to put this in at the very, very last minute because this will take no time at all to cook. Now, in our pot, we have our chicken, we have our vegetables, and this is at a nice rolling boil, uh, which is good because you want to cook this pretty quickly. And the one thing that you don't want to do, you want to serve this almost immediately. You don't want to overcook it because if you tend to overcook it, the pasta will soak up all of the liquid that's in your soup and you'll end up having to add more liquid. Uh, we added frozen vegetables to this. Frozen vegetables have the same nutrient content as fresh vegetables do. Uh, you know, this time of year, it's really difficult to uh, find a variety of fresh vegetables at the farmer's market or at the store, and they're really inexpensive. So we're going to let this go, and this has been cooking for about five or six minutes. The other two ingredients that we're going to add is, again, we have the, uh, the spinach. We have some grated Parmesan cheese. Now, I chose a Parmesan Reggiano cheese, which is a harder cheese that has a lot more flavor. Mm -hmm. And um, 
actually uh, kind of uh, gives the soup a nice bite and it really makes it minestrone because minestrone is an Italian based soup and this is an Italian cheese or Italian cheese. Uh, we're going to season this with kosher salt and black pepper. What I like to do is use about a, a two part ratio of salt and a one part ratio of coarse ground black pepper. The reason I like to use that is that I use the pepper as a marker and that kind of tells me how much pepper I've actually, or how much salt that I've actually used in the dish. And you also mentioned too, with the type of broth that you're using, you chose the sodium free or a low sodium option, yeah. which is also a really good idea. Anytime you're preparing at home on your own, you can control the types of ingredients that go in. So a low sodium option is always a good idea for checking food labels. Absolutely. And one of the things that, uh, you know, when, you're, when you have young children and you want to uh, give them healthy habits is really involve them when you're grocery shopping or involve them in the cooking process because it's, it's, it's really important for them to feel like they're part of the process and they actually have a choice in what their, what their meals are. Because a lot of kids will eat what's put in front of them, but if they have a choice or they go to the store with their mom and dad and say, hey, I want to try this, their parents are more likely to, uh, to take the food and cook it for their, for their children. Healthy eating is one of the uh, most important ways to prevent uh, chronic disease like uh, ob obesity Absolutely. and diabetes. And, uh, and you, you can't know, ever start too soon. Exactly, because you know when you're young and you're starting to put those things in your body that uh, really aren't the healthiest, you know, it's a cumulative effect. It's yes. not something that, you, you know, that happens overnight. Um, it's, it's a lifelong uh, uh, thing. And if you start early eating healthy, Absolutely. you're going to have a healthy lifestyle. Great. So our soup's at a pretty rapid boil here right now. And it smells great. If you were in this room, you would think you're at your grandmother's house right now. It smells so good. And the whole wheat pasta is going to cook about uh, twice the normal size. And this is just about ready. So I'm going to go ahead and turn the heat down a little bit. I'm going to add our spinach to the soup. Add just a touch of salt and pepper. And again, you see what I'm doing with the salt and pepper. I'm actually picking it up in my fingers and actually just kind of moving it around. And I can tell exactly how much I put in there. Uh, I put in probably half a teaspoon of salt and pepper combined, which is uh, considering We've used uh, unsalted chicken broth when we had the, uh, the chicken and the vegetables made in the uh, slow cooker or the crock pot. Um, we added no sodium to that, so this is really a low sodium dish. The cheese does add some sodium to it as well as flavor. Okay, so right now we have about a quart and a half of soup. I'm going to go ahead and we're going to put the soup into a nice bowl. And I'm a big believer that food should be presented well. And when food's presented well, it's gonna taste good because you do eat with your eyes. So right here we have our chicken minestrone soup. And we're gonna to top that with some Parmesan cheese. And that took about all of 12 minutes. And if you look <laughs> at the soup, in and of itself, it looks great, it presents well, it's got a lot of color, it's got the pasta, Absolutely. it's got high protein. Uh, if you wanted to doctor this up and throw some beans in there, you could do that as well. Absolutely, it's another good healthy protein source. And of course, like Jim said, you always wanna make sure you take time for meal to, meals to make t sure you enjoy it. Um, meal time should be a nice process where you can actually learn to appreciate the time you just spent and enjoy the food that you're eating because it is giving your body the nourishment to keep going. So. We're going to go ahead and taste the soup. All right. I'm going to get a spoonful of everything that I have here. <laughs> and we're going to taste that. I'm going to follow your lead here with some cheese. Very hot, very okay. delicious, and very simple. I mean, the best part about this soup is that you can take what you've made here, the leftover soup, let this cool at room temperature, and put this into baggies. Whenever you want it for your next meal, all you need to do is pull it out of the baggie, put it into a pot, it's ready to go. You know, cooking at home allows you to use healthier ingredients. When you go to restaurants, most of the foods are filled with sodium. Absolutely. They have a lot of fat. Uh, if you added go to restaurants, a lot of sugar, a lot of added sugar that you really don't need. Uh, try using healthy substitutions. Uh, when you're cooking with food. I mean, if you saw what we did, we used the unsalted chicken broth and it transforms your recipes and makes them a lot more nutritious and a lot more helpful for you and your family. 
and uh, it tastes good too. So here's the soup. We think it turned out lovely. The uh, next recipe that we have for a one-stop chicken chop is we have a chicken quesadilla. What we're using today for our chicken quesadilla is we have a red, yellow, and green pepper. We have a yellow onion and we have some fresh garlic. We have some of the diced chicken meat that we picked from our chicken. We have a low-fat cheese that is strictly made for uh, Mexican dishes. So this is something that you have to look a little bit for, but it has 50% fewer calories and 50% less fat than normal cheese, and it has the same nice cheese flavor profile. For sure, and the same calcium, vitamin D, things like that. Exactly, so it's really, really good for you. Uh, the recipe calls for eight inch uh, flour tortillas. I found some multi-grain uh, flour tortillas that we're gonna use today, which Great. are an added benefit, because most of the flour tortillas that you find are the highly processed white flour and fat and uh, a fair amount of sodium. These are on the healthy side, so you'll see uh, how we prepare those. We're gonna start by going ahead, going ahead and chopping the vegetables. And what we're gonna have Mary do while I'm chopping the veggies is put together a sauce okay. that we're gonna use on top of the quesadillas. And what we're using is a fat-free Greek yogurt in place of sour cream. Now, a lot of people think they've gotta have sour cream. Uh, when you taste the Greek mm -hmm. yogurt, it's got the same acidity as yeah. sour cream. And when we add the lime to it, it might add a little bit of cilantro to that okay. as well. You really feel like you're getting sour cream. Absolutely. And, and, and the protein great. benefit from Greek yogurt and a low-fat option. It's absolutely amazing. So, we're gonna go ahead and start chopping our peppers. Now, Do you just with, want me to wedge this? Yeah. I'm okay. Gonna, I'm gonna switch knives. Oh, with perfect. Uh, with the peppers, I'll show you a little trick. With the peppers, you want to cut on the outside of the peppers, and the reason for that is you want to leave that seed pod inside the pepper. When you have that seed pod inside the pepper, you don't have the pepper seeds all over your cutting board, so we're just going to toss that out. We've got the green pepper. And this is great if you have a garden in your backyard and you've got green peppers or if you've got red peppers or you go to uh, the market or wherever you, you shop or, or if you get uh, food from a pantry or the Mid-Ohio Food Bank, they always seem to have peppers. And this is one of the great uses of peppers uh, that I think is just uh, really fun and uh, gives you a, something different to try. Now with the peppers, I'm going to take these and I'm going to slice these into about quarter inch slices. Okay, and by doing so, and if you notice, what I'm doing with my knife is I'm kind of using the rocking action of my knife and I'm moving the knife back and forth on the peppers. And the reason I am doing that, and I'm also using the soft side of the pepper versus the shiny side of the pepper, if there's a spot on the knife that might be a little bit dull when you're using the, the uh, shiny side of the pepper, the knife might slide off and you might be prone to cut yourself, which you really don't want to do. We have a pan over here that's uh, heating up. Whenever you do any type of saute work, you wanna make sure that your pan is already hot before you add the food. A lot of people will do saute work and they will actually put cold food into a cold pan. And what that does is you're not allowing the food to heat properly or to saute properly. Uh, you wanna add food to a hot pan. The reason for that is, is when you add food to a hot pan, uh, the cold food's gonna reduce the temperature of the pan. It's gonna take longer to cook. And when you're sauteing, you wanna cook the vegetables so they're crisp. When you put them in the pan, you wanna hear that sound. I mean, that's a great sound. For any chef, that means that things are really happening. Things are working fast. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna take our onion and I'm gonna use about half an onion. We're gonna cut the top off, cut the bottom, and then we're gonna take the skin off, put that back into our container. And with our onion, you can take this and then move it toward you and you're gonna slice it. Your best bet is to try to lift this up. If you notice the way my fingers are, my fingers and my knuckles are uh, straight up and down. And I do that so I don't cut myself. We're gonna take our onion. We're gonna add this to our peppers. And this is a great way to get people to try new foods, especially if they're used to just having a green pepper or a red pepper. When you mix foods together, 
it's a good way for people to try new things um, and be a little bit more open. So we're gonna let this saute here. This is gonna be moved up on high. What Mary's gonna do, she's gonna squeeze uh, about two quarters of a lime okay. into the Greek yogurt. Alrighty. And then she's gonna add the cilantro and she's gonna stir this up and then we're gonna use that as the garnish for the quesadillas. Okay, so all we have these uh, sauteing here. We're gonna take a second pan and we're gonna go ahead and start browning up our uh, tortillas. And you know, when you're sauteing your vegetables, the one thing that people are prone to do is they wanna start turning their vegetables, start cooking the vegetables as soon as they put them in the pan. You don't wanna do that because when you turn them, you're actually reducing the temperature of the pan and you're, and you're increasing the cooking time of your vegetables. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and add a little bit of olive oil to the pan down here. Just a touch of olive oil, we're gonna let that heat up a little bit. And the one thing that I didn't add to our mix here was garlic. We have a whole clove of garlic, you could use the canned garlic or the refrigerated garlic. Put the garlic into a towel, kind of press it down. The garlic is gonna fall into small little pieces. I'm gonna take one garlic clove, and what I'm gonna do with that is take my knife, smash this down a little bit, and when I smash it, what it does is it helps remove the skin from the garlic, and you just toss the skin out, put that over here. We're gonna slice this garlic really, really thinly. <laughs> and again, you don't have to do it it's like magic. as quickly <laughs> as I do, okay? We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna add our chopped garlic. A Little bit of salt and pepper, not much. Again, about a half a teaspoon. Okay, so we've got our pan over here. Then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna turn this up a little bit and when we put our flour tortilla into the oil, we don't wanna get it really, really hot because if you put the, the uh, tortilla in the pan when it's too hot, it's gonna burn. And that's one thing that you don't want it to do. Now the, the peppers look great, they smell great. You're getting a lot more nutrients using the colorful vegetables uh, than uh, if you would use just uh, straight uh, green peppers and onions. Now, what, what are your thoughts on frozen peppers? I think they're a great alternative if you don't have access to the fresh. So like you said um, before, you go into winter and the vegetables aren't always available at right. farmer's markets or they may be more expensive at a grocery store. So choosing a frozen vegetable is a great option. It's still as nutritious and it still gets the vitamins and minerals that you need. Oil in this pan is actually looking pretty good. And you can tell when it's getting hot, it'll start to skitter across the pan. It'll move across the pan a little bit. So you're gonna go, wanna go ahead and add the tortilla to the pan and kind of crisp that up. I like turning it around like this so it gets a nice distribution of oil on the pan. And this is uh, on about the high side of the, uh, of the uh, burner here just to get this uh, browned up pretty quickly, but then we will turn it down. With our peppers, you don't wanna overcook these and you don't wanna undercook these either. You want some crispness in the vegetables. Uh, the longer you cook the vegetables, the more nutrients you're going to lose. Now there's a lot of debate right now about canned vegetables and frozen vegetables. From a dietitian standpoint, what's your stance on frozen vegetables versus canned? Sure, so frozen um, tends to not have as many preservatives added to it. In the canning process, a lot of sodium has to be added, but canned vegetables are still a great option. You wanna make sure you're checking the food label, so buying a low sodium or a no salt added canned vegetable is gonna be the best way to go ahead to make sure that you don't have too much sodium added to those, but you still get a lot of nutritional value from those vegetables. That's great. Okay, so our tortilla, you can see here, is starting to work, and you can actually tell if you uh, look at the uh, tortilla, it'll start to puff up. It'll start to get little bubbles in here. And what that is, that's the two sides of the tortilla starting to separate a little bit. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna flip him over. And he's a little bit browned. And uh, what we want is just a little bit of crispness to the tortilla, but not a whole heck of a lot. So Jim, you used olive oil, which is yeah. full of healthy fats, heart Absolutely. healthy fats. If someone's a little bit concerned about using oil, is cooking spray an okay alternative or what do you suggest for You those? could use cooking spray, but if you use cooking spray, you would wanna spray down the tortilla first okay. as opposed to the pan. Because if you put it in the pan, it's just gonna all go to one side and kinda of congeal in one section. So you wanna spray that uh, by itself. 
This tortilla is just about ready. You can see we've got some color on the tortilla here. We've got some brown on the tortilla, so that is good. We're gonna go ahead and pull him out. And we're gonna put him on a towel just to kind of soak up some of the oil. We're gonna add our second tortilla to the pan here. And the vegetables, you can start to smell the caramelization of the onions. It's actually the sweetness of the onions. Onions contain a lot of natural sugar and you're starting to smell the sweetness of the onions uh, in this dish here. And right now, uh, based on the fact that the pan is still hot and we have what we call carryover cooking, the vegetables are gonna continue to cook and they're gonna be nice and tasty and they're still gonna have a little bit of a bite to them. Gonna add a touch more pepper to this. And again, this is, takes no long doesn't take very long to cook, so it's all good. So again, you can see it's starting to puff up. And if you look here, this one's got a little more color to it. So you know this is gonna be nice and tasty. Are there different herbs and things that you would use to use seasoning instead of a salt that maybe people could grow in their garden or on their windowsill? Well, for the uh, uh, Mexican food, I, I, you know, the big ones for me would be cumin. Okay. Uh, which is uh, great in and of itself. I've been in a pinch before where I've actually taken, uh, or taken taco seasoning mix okay. where I didn't have cumin because the taco seasoning mix has a lot of those flavor profiles in there. The downside to using a mix, it has a lot of sodium in it. So that's one thing that you want to kind of avoid. So we added some of our chicken to that. We've got our low fat Mexican cheese. We're going to put this the whole way around here. Then we're going to take our tongs, and we've got our colorful veggies here. And then we're going to go ahead and put the top of our original tortilla back on top. And we're going to kind of press down on it, because when we press down on it, what we want is we want the heat that's in the pan to help melt the cheese, help bring the chicken up to heat, and, and give us the nice consistency that we expect with the quesadilla. And again, this is uh, great to do. You can make these up in advance, but I like to brown them up uh, kind of on, on both sides. To me, it's a lot quicker to make them this way. If you have a flat top grill, like a pan pancake grill, you could also make them that way. You could do a whole bunch at one time. Okay, so this thing here is just about ready. And I can actually see that the cheese is starting to melt. So what I'm going, to do, I'm going to flip this over and we're going to heat the other side quickly and then we're going to put this onto our pan. So this is probably just about ready to go. And we lost a couple of our ingredients, but we're going to put those back in here. Put this on our board and actually you can see in here that the cheese is melted, uh, the chicken looks good. Okay, so what we'll do next, we're going to go ahead and take our quesadilla. We've let this rest for about a minute. We're going to go ahead and cut this in half this way. Cut it in half this way. I'm going to go and put this on the plate. And then Mary's going to go ahead and add the piece de resistance. Ah, a dollop on each. A little dollop on each. And you can also add some salsa to this, which would be great. You can use homemade salsa or you, sure. can, you can make the, uh, use the jarred salsa. Absolutely. And this looks great. It smells wonderful. And just to uh, add one more little garnish to it, because I love fresh cilantro. <laughs> it smells really good. We're going to take a little cilantro sprig, put that on top, and there we have a wonderful low-fat quesadilla that's um, uh, high in nutrients and it's got a lot of fiber. It's got a lot of the uh, uh, things that, that we want uh, when we're eating, and it just looks good, too. We're ready for our third recipe for our one-stop chicken chop and we're going to make a chicken salad that uh, involves uh, the chicken, light mayonnaise, lemon juice, Dijon mustard, um, some fresh chopped celery, fresh dill, and uh, for the carrier, we're gonna use radicchio, and we're gonna use Boston bib lettuce. So with this recipe, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna add our two cups of chicken to our bowl. We're gonna add our half cup of mayonnaise to the bowl, and what uh, Mary's gonna do is start to dice, or actually cut our, our lemon, and if you notice what she's doing, she's uh, running the lemon back and forth on her cutting board to add some heat to the lemon, and with that way you're able to get a lot more juice out of the lemon. 
And tell us how you got interested in cooking. Sure, so my mom actually was a very good cook growing up and I was a very picky eater. So she was the type of mom that would only cook one meal, though I have three sisters. So um, it was very much, um, she would only cook one meal for all of us and if I didn't like it then you know I didn't eat but <laughs> often enough I was hungry enough and so I would eat it but um, once I got to college actually and I started learning that it really did matter what I was feeding myself and my mom wasn't there to cook for me anymore um, I would end up calling her a lot to say okay mom what was that recipe and how do I do this and so it was a lot of over the phone training um, of course then until I got to school and I was under your watchful eye and I, uh, I learned a few tricks of the trade there too so um, Thankfully, my mom got a lot of the skill. I didn't get blessed with it from birth, but I've, um, <laughs> over the course of time, learned a few of her tricks. That's, so. all, that's incredible, that's amazing. <laughs> so what we're gonna do is, uh, Mary's cut the lemon. We're gonna go ahead and add half of the lemon juice to our chicken salad. And again, the reason we're adding the lemon juice, this is one of the things that adds flavor without adding salt or without adding other ingredients uh, to this that might not be in your best interest to do so. So we've got our lemon, we're gonna add about a tablespoon of Dijon mustard to this. I wouldn't use ballpark mustard or any kind of a real uh, light yellow mustard to this because it would really uh, discolor your chicken salad. We're gonna go ahead and add our chopped celery and the celery is chopped about between a quarter and an eighth inch chopped. Now this is a great um, opportunity making um, a salad, a chicken salad like this where you've got a couple of different ingredients that you're mixing together where you can sneak in some different vegetables and fruits so that maybe your kids get some exposure Absolutely. to new things. So <laughs> things like celery, you can add um, some sliced grapes or grapes maybe or some raisins, mm -hmm. cranberries, things like that. Um, and it's a great activity that you can actually do with your kids too, because the more invested the kid is in the meal, the more likely they are to try some new things. So if you can have them be your sous chef where they can learn some of the skills early on, those are just developing better life habits. That's a great way to teach the kids. I'm gonna add just a pinch of salt to this. So that looks pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and grab this dill here and sprinkle this in the chicken salad. And this is about ready to go. So we're gonna go ahead and add about three ounces of our chicken salad mix to each one of our little cups, our radicchio cup. If you don't like radicchio or if you don't like the uh, Boston bib, you can use leaf lettuce. I would probably refrain from using iceberg lettuce. Iceberg lettuce has very little nutritional value outside of a little bit of fiber maybe sure. here and there. So we have our things here. So we're gonna go ahead and add a garnish. And again, I'm all about making sure that you eat with your eyes. So we're gonna take a little bit of a, a dill garnish and add these to each one of the little chicken salads. If you wanted to put some fresh vegetables in here, some uh, carrot sticks, some celery sticks, some diced uh, uh, red peppers or, or tomatoes, anything, you could add that to it uh, as an accompaniment to this dish. It's a great dish, it tastes, uh, it tastes great, and you saw it really, really simple to make. Yeah, so, very simple. You know, I think the, uh, the real test is now what we think of it. So, I know. Mary, you first. Oh gosh. Okay, <laughs> I'm gonna try the radicchio. That's very good. It's amazing. And it's great because you were able to use a lot, some of the lower fat mayonnaise and mm -hmm. um, lower fat ingredients. And you can, like I said before, you can mix in a bunch of different vegetables and fruits. And the thing that's great about this, I don't miss the salt. Right. You know, a lot of people will say, well, gee, it needs more seasoning, it needs more salt. Sure. I don't feel like I'm missing anything in this. Yeah, um, using seasonings like dill or lemon and natural flavors mm -hmm. is a great way to enhance that without adding, adding and, more salt. And I think we're getting a nice crunch from the vegetables yeah. as well. So Absolutely. it's very good. So there we have it, there's our chicken salad. I also want to thank the John Maloney Family Health and Wellness Center and our sponsors, Columbus Public Health and the Ohio State University Ross Heart Hospital's Wellness Series. Stay tuned for our next Dish on Delish and we look forward to seeing you again.